In today's presentation, I'm going to tackle the watchdog timer. I put it here as a prerequisite presentation number five, which is interrupts. The reason is that the watchdog timer will be using interrupts, and it's going to be helpful if you see this presentation first. Now, this is our architecture in the, the squares in green are the ones that I've already addressed. The one in yellow, watchdog timer, is what I'm going to be discussing today. As, as you can notice, the watchdog timer is part of our layer 2 architecture. So let's start with some uh, definitions. So the watchdog timer is a timer that can be configured to a, a timeout value. It continu continuously counts down from the timeout value. So you set it to a timeout value and then it's going to continuously time, time down till it gets to the timeout automatically. If the timeout value is reached, the uh, watchdog timer can be configured to respond in one of three ways. First, it can be uh, configured to trigger an interrupt or it can be configured to reset the microcontroller or finally it can be triggered to it can be configured to trigger an interrupt followed by a microcontroller reset now the microcontroller software is expected to con continuously reset the watchdog timer before it reaches its uh, timeout. This will avoid the triggering of a interrupt or reset. So the system so if the system software hangs up, crashes, or gets stuck in an infinite loop, it would fail to reset the watchdog timer, creating a uh, reset or some kind of interrupt. Hopefully that's going to help and resolve the issue. That's good, especially if you are on your way to Mars. Now, choosing the timeout period that uh, balances responsiveness to faults with the need to avoid unnecessary resets during number operation. So basically, you want to you want to choose a timeout period in which, let's assume you have a fault. The question is, how long do you want to wait till the fault is discovered and you do something about it? That's one of the items that you have to consider. And the other item that you have to consider is, you don't want your system to constantly be uh, uh, use all its time resetting the watchdog timer instead of doing useful work. So now let's go to the uh, data sheet and get some information. First step is to go to the data sheet and get the information needed. So the data sheet is organized by functionality. So let's go to the watchdog timer section. Now from here, we're going to jump to the registered description sections. As you can see from here, there are two registers that we're going to have to account for. Now, the register description section contains the detailed information on how to configure the watchdog timer. By uh, manipulating the bit in each register, this will enable us to set up the watchdog timer behavior. So the next step is to create our watchdog timer framework using the information obtained from this register description section. Now the agenda for the uh, rest of the presentation will be as follows. First we need 
to create the framework for the watchdog timer. Next, we are going to have what I call a, a sample program preamble. I'm just going to give you some information that you have to know prior to programming uh, related to the 328 uh, microcontroller. And finally, we're going to go through the uh, sample program. So let's start with the uh, framework. So as usual, we are going to create a table. This portion of the table, I got it from the data sheets. So we have the function name, bit, and bit name. Now with this information, we're going to write the code for our framework. So here we have this code here, which is a uh, number of defined parameters. It's going to allow us to access the different bits in the register so we can change behavior. So here you have our, uh, our include file. The name for the include file is going to be framework underscore WTT watchdog timer dot H. Now the source code is generated by extracting the contents of the column code. So this is what we had in our column code. All I did is copy and paste it into our, our include file. Now, to prevent any naming conflicts with existing development environment, the parameter names have been modified by adding an X in front of the parameter. So these are the parameters name as I got from the data sheet, but I added an X in front because many environments already do this work for you. However, in my presentations, I've been doing this work because I want to show you where things come from. Also, I would like to mention that as a side effect, we have created a traceability of our source code back to the Admega data sheet. So we'll know where all these things come from. So let's go into what I call the sample, uh, sample program preamble. I'm just going to enumerate things that we need to know or consider. So first, we're going to have to be able to disable the global interrupt. And this is the code that will accomplish that. Next, we are going to have to be able to reset the watchdog timer. And this is the code that does that for us. We're going to enable a configuration mode of the microcontroller a watchdog timer function and we're going to have to configure the watchdog timer to uh, upon the wind down to if it doesn't get reset to generate an interrupt a reset microcontroller reset or both when it winds down then we're going to have to configure the timeout uh, period, which can be as low as uh, 16 milliseconds or as high as 8 seconds. So this shows the values that you can use. Next, we are going to have to enable the global interrupts. We disable it, we need to enable it. And this is the line of code going to do it. And finally, we need to we need to know what's the header for the interrupt service routine, which is this one here, and that was discussed during my presentation number five. So let's go to the uh, code. So let's look at the schematic first. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to hook up uh, five LEDs to the microcontroller on position port P0, port P1, B2, P3, and port B4. Now when it comes to the include files, which is our frameworks, we're going to use our framework that edge, which is the first one we develop. We're doing the framework interrupts, ports, watchdog timer. So let's start uh, by talking about uh, our routine. 
So first routine that I have is called init ports. What I need to do is initialize these uh, five ports to outputs. So I have here pin B zero to output one, two, three, four, and five. So pin B zero to pin B four to output because we're going to they are going to have to generate the five bolts to turn on the LED. Next, we have to uh, initialize the interrupt, the functions associated with interrupts. So we're going to have to set the uh, interrupt mode for the uh, for the system. We're going to have to enable the watchdog interrupt, and then we're going to have to enable the global interrupt. So when I call the init interrupt, basically I'm enabling all the interrupts. We're ready to go. Next, I need to tackle initializing the watchdog timer. Now this is a se sequence that I follow. It's a sequence that you must follow. So first you need to to set the you need to reset the watchdog timer. Next, you have to get the watchdog timer into configuration mode so you can change the configuration. And finally, you have to set up the timeout uh, time, which in this case we're going to use four seconds. Now, these values of one and zero on this register, of course, that comes from the data sheet. So let's look at the code. At the main, I'm sorry, main routine. So what I did is first I initialize the ports, then I initialize the watchdog timer, and finally I initialize the interrupts. It's important that this is the last thing you you initialize because once you initialize the interrupts, then you can actually have an interrupt, and you want to make sure everything is set up before the interrupt. The idea here is that I'm going to wait for time and verify that things don't reset when they are not supposed to and they, are and they do reset when they are supposed to. So if we have a reset, what's going to happen is the uh, program execution is going to go to the interrupt service routine which is going to turn on and off a uh, pin B0 which is this one here. So. The first thing is I delayed for one millisecond. And after that, I'm going to reset and turn on pin B1. The idea here is that I wait for one millisecond and nothing happens to the B0, but the B1 turns on. That means that there was the delay, one millisecond delay is fine, nothing happens. Next, I'm going to wait for two milliseconds and again, I'm going to verify that uh, the LED hooked up to port B0 doesn't come on and off, which means that the in interrupt server routine was not executed. And after two milliseconds, I'm going to reset the watchdog timer, and then I'm going to uh, turn off pin B1 and turn on pin B2, or 2. Next, I'm going to wait for 300 milliseconds and verify again that the server routine did not get triggered. And then I'm going to turn on, uh, turn off pin B, pin B2 and turn on pin B3. And finally, I'm going to I'm going to put a delay of 400 milliseconds and verify and then reset and verify that the survey routine was not triggered so there was no interrupt trigger and then I'm going to turn on turn off port B3 and turn on port B4 now what I'm going to do at this so so far I verified that things did not get uh, interrupted there was no interrupt when there was not supposed to be one 
Now here I'm going to verify that the interrupt gets triggered when it's supposed to. So how do I verify that? So here I turn in the light port on. Now what should happen here is after after a certain amount of time, a little bit after 400 milliseconds, we should have the interrupt should be triggered. And that's going to get you to the ISR routine where port B0 is going to come on and then it's going to go off. And after that happens, then the pin in B4, because after this delay, we jump into the ISR and then we execute the immediately next line, which is turning off the pin B4. So the pin B4 should be turn off and then I'm going to turn on pin port 1. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get into the uh, into the while loop and then what's going to happen that every four seconds the interrupt should be triggered and we should have an on and off light. So when the program is done so what we're going to have is the port B1 is going to be on and every four seconds we're going to have an on and off uh, that last uh, on uh, then after 100 milliseconds and off flashing. So every four seconds we'll have a flashing of the light. So here we are, so we've verified that it needs trigger when it's not supposed to and triggered when it's supposed to. By the way, these programs I have, uh, I, I have uh, <coughs> uh, verified in random. So anyhow, this gets us to our end. So during these uh, presentations, uh, which was the watchdog timer, We've talked about the watchdog timer functionality. We created a framework and then we developed a sample program in which we showed that the uh, watchdog ti ti timer did not uh, create any interrupt or reset when it wasn't supposed to and did create interrupts and reset when it was supposed to. So anyhow, I hope uh, you've enjoyed it, uh, this presentation and hopefully I'll see you soon with the next one. Thank you very much.